Okay, everyone, this is what you've been waiting for. People are mesmerized by her. Jenna is the most successful adult film star of all time. She is just a god. Jenna Jameson is everything you'd expect. And she is by far the sexiest woman to ever step foot on this planet. And nothing you'd expect. You gotta give it to the girl. She is smart. In the next two hours, you'll meet a self-proclaimed dork who transformed herself from an ugly duckling into the queen of porn. Along the way, there were many dark days. And I had felt abandoned and I just dove deeper into drugs. But Jenna overcame her past to create a multi-million dollar merchandising empire and defied the critics by blazing a path to mainstream fame and fortune. The porn industry rakes in about 14 billion dollars a year in the USA. And millions of that goes to a young woman named Jenna Jameson who gets paid for having sex with strangers. But despite all her riches, the little girl from Las Vegas cannot buy what she longs for most. I miss my mother more than I can express. This is the surrealistic saga of the most popular star in adult entertainment. A woman searching for love in a sea of lust. This is the story of Jenna Jameson, the E! True Hollywood Story. I have a lot of things that I need to get off my chest. There's a massive dream of being one of the world's Her life's ambition was to be a star. never from the public April 17, 2003. A swarm of reporters and faithful admirers crowded around 29-year-old Jenna Jameson. Jenna was inducted into porn's version of the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I was talking to Larry Flint and he said, when you bend over to put your hands in the cement, make sure they get a really nice ass shot. During her prolific career, Jameson's assets have turned on millions of adult video fans. She has even made waves as a mainstream actress. Janet, keep your head down. Keep my head down? Passionate, charismatic, seductive, Jenna is truly a 21st century fox. But international fame came with a steep emotional price tag. I look back on my life and I feel like I'm about 60 years old. It worries me for my, for my, but I'm, I'm scared that I'm not going to make it through, to tell you the truth. Jenna's fear of the future is firmly rooted in the past. She was born Jenna Marie Mazzoli, April 9th, 1974, in a most apropos place, Sin City. Jenna's father, Larry Mazzoli. She came out of the womb with a smile on her face. I remember Jenna, uh, he was so beautiful, I, I was pretty overwhelmed. I knew Jenna was going to be a, a heartbreaker right away. Larry was a 34-year-old program director at the local NBC TV affiliate. Jenna's mother, 32-year-old Judith Brooke Mazzoli, was a former Vegas showgirl and a statuesque knockout. Judy was an extremely intelligent girl from Wichita, Kansas. Not jaded, not very worldly, uh, very genuine, uh, very sweet. Judy's whole thrust in life was to be a, a wife and a mother. Jenna had a big brother. Three-year-old Tony wasn't wild about having a baby sister. All of a sudden, there was another little entity, and I had to share that universe. She was treated as royalty, a princess from the time she was born. But in early 1976, Jenna's little kingdom was torn apart. Her mother was diagnosed with skin cancer. Judy had a mole on her shoulder that it was malignant and she became very ill. She couldn't bathe herself. She couldn't get up out of bed. She lost all her hair. I can remember so vividly her screaming at night from the pain. They had given her about six months to live and she only lived about 90 days. Judith Mazzoli died on February 20th, 1976. Jenna was not yet two years old. I just remember being so incredibly confused. 
You know, I was in diapers. I was just a little kid. And to have your mother ripped away from you that way devastated me and changed the whole course of my life. I took uh, Jenna and Tony to uh, Judy's gravesite in Las Vegas uh, probably every Sunday for a good couple of years. Um, but it became a chore not only for me to watch the kids be sad during those times, but I, I felt it was debilitating for them. Jenna's dad dealt with the loss of his wife by reevaluating his own life. Larry Mazzoli decided the time was right to fulfill a childhood dream. Well, I quit a lucrative um, career for the NBC station to become a policeman. I went to Nye County, Nevada, which is just north of Las Vegas, and got a job as the graveyard deputy. When Mazzoli wasn't working, he tried hard to be both mother and father to his kids. Jenna competed with Tony for her dad's approval. I would go out in the middle of the pool and uh, try to coax my son into diving into the pool. And Jenna would be standing next to him in her, her diapers uh, just watching me. And instead of my son diving in courageously, Jenna would. Jenna always threw caution to the wind. I remember the pool incident. This, this was a turning point in my life. I would just go so far to get everybody's attention. I would do anything it took. Even as a child, Jenna was different, and she loved to let her imagination run wild. I used to sit on my bed and gaze out the window at the stars and think, someday I'm going to be a star. In 1979, the spunky five-year-old began pursuing her dream. She enrolled at the Fern Adair Conservatory in Las Vegas. Taking dance lessons was my idea. For as long as I can remember, I wanted to be just like my mom. And she was so graceful and so amazing that I knew that this was what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a showgirl. When I was young, I could have taken dance class for six, eight hours a day. It's all I cared about. Well... Not the only thing. I loved being naked. When I was younger, it felt so right. Everything felt so comfortable. And I would play doctor with my friends. And and it just didn't seem like it was a bad thing. And I would, I would sneak and look at my dad's Playboys. And I remember thinking, I want to be one of those girls so bad. They're so pretty. I would pray that I looked like them when I was older. But Jenna couldn't wait. During her grade school years, she begged Dad to enter her in local beauty pageants. I would strap my banner to myself, put my crown on, and I would walk the streets of Las Vegas asking for sponsorship. I'd go into the car dealerships begging, please, just sponsor me. I had major self-esteem problems. I was always trying to outdo myself. I felt like I had to prove myself constantly because I felt alone, lonely, and I wanted everyone to love me. Jenna often won the competitions, but still had a tough time loving herself. I went into this very gawky stage. I was very thin, my head was really big, my teeth were really messed up, I wore glasses. I had braces, and I looked like a boy. And I remember in school, in gym class, looking at all the other girls who were already shapely, and I looked like I was in third grade, you know? It was horrible. Jenna's school years were an unstable time for the entire Mazzoli family. They moved frequently while Dad worked as a police officer. My father was looking for happiness after my mother died and he drug us cross country and back and that made that my life incredibly hard as a child. That's probably why I'm so aggressive when it comes to meeting people. I was put into so many different schools.